Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Eric Johansson, a teacher with LSAT Demon. With me is Nathan Fox, the co-founder of LSATdemon.com and the weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. Nathan, I just wrapped up a tutoring session with one of my wonderful tutoring students. Yep. And they brought a LR question, which was pretty challenging, must be true, except question and well we just got into what the question was actually asking in particular what some of the words in the question actually meant and i thought we could go over it together to just break down how we would translate this question into something we can answer in a common sense way so i think this you is... misspoke there you said it oh, was a I? must be true except question but i think it's actually uh, a could be true except question or a must be false question the question Good, yes that, the question that you have uh, pasted into our document here says each of the following principles is logically consistent with the columnist's conclusion except and so you said uh, when we first picked up the zoom today you said that you were talking to your student about that phrase logically consistent with that's what right what does that mean so logically consistent with you are right just means could be true yeah another way of thinking about it is that consistent on the lsat is just the opposite of inconsistent so inconsistent means two things that can't possibly be true at the same time like x equals three and x is an even number X is three and X is an even number. Inconsistent. Mm -hmm. Can't post, can't both be true. Not possible for them to both be true. X can't be three and even at the same time. So those would be inconsistent, but logically consistent with doesn't mean that <clears throat> it has to like match. Mm -hmm. It just means that it doesn't violate. So you're right that logically consistent with just means could be true. Um, yeah, the, the, it's, it's tricky because some of the incorrect answers here were answers that seemingly had nothing to do with the argument. So here's the example that I came up with. My argument is that all round foods are tasty. Mm -hmm. Therefore, pizzas are tasty. Okay. Now here's a statement. The sky is blue. Mm-hmm. Is that logically consistent with what I just said about yep. circular foods and pizza? Totally. But it they has have nothing no to do with one another. Yeah. And if they have nothing to do with one another, then they're not inconsistent. They don't violate each other. It could be that all round foods are tasty and pizza's round and pizza's tasty and the sky is blue. Those things can all be true at the same time. Yep. In a happy world, we're all just eating pizza under a blue sky. Oh, can you imagine? But that that shocks people sometimes when they when they read that usage on the LSAT, because they think that logically consistent with ha means it has to match. Mm. Let me give you another example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my example of inconsistent was X equals three and X is an even number. Those are clearly inconsistent with each other. Yeah. So people think that consistent means X is three and x is an odd number now those two statements are definitely consistent with one another but it's also consistent to say x is three and the sky is blue mm -hmm. it's not inconsistent that yep. x is three and the sky is blue mm -hmm. therefore it is consistent it could be true if two things can be true at the same time then they are consistent with one another yep so to wrap that all up if you see a question that says each of the following principles is logically consistent, except then you're looking for one that must be false. The wrong right. answers could be true. Maybe they must be true. But the one right answer is going to be the one that's inconsistent, the one that must be false. And the wrong answers, they don't have to be true. They just have to be possible if that's your stem. And useful to take that extra step 
on these questions a lot of the time of saying, hey, what makes the wrong answers wrong? What makes the right answer right? Yep. And if the wrong answers could be true, the right answer cannot be true, aka must be yep. false. Yep. We do that on logic games. I mean, the, the, the all the time. We see those questions all the time, right? Logic games ask you each of the following could be true, except each of the following could be false, except each of the following must be true, except mm -hmm. each of the following could be true, except whatever they and it, it's really useful to be able to go back and forth between the one right answer and the four wrong answers. So if I see a question like each of the following principles is logically consistent, except then I say, okay, so four answers are logically consistent, which again, just means could be true. Mm -hmm. The one right answer is the one that can't be logically consistent, isn't logically consistent. In other words, it's logically inconsistent. In other words, must be false. Yep. So that fluency does apply on logical reasoning a lot because they also have a lot of accept questions on logical reasoning. So it's useful to think, you know, we see questions that are like each of the following explains the paradox, except, or each of the following weakens the argument, except. Mm -hmm. And so then in that case, we're looking for four wrong answers that do explain the paradox Yep. and one that does not, or four uh, wrong answers that do weaken the question and one that does not. And then again, it's, it's like that weakened example. The correct answer does not have to strengthen the argument. If there are four wrong answers that weaken the argument, then the one right answer could just be the sky is blue or something totally irrelevant. It just has to not weaken it. Right. Yeah. Great. Cool. Thanks for bringing that in. Yeah. Thanks for working through that one with me. Sure. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.